In this section, we're going to be looking at combinations of functions and composite functions. And out of that section, we're going to be finding the domain of a function, combining functions using the algebra of functions and specifying domains. Also, we'll be forming comp composite functions and determine the domains for composite functions. And then we're going to write functions as compositions. We'll first begin with the domain of a function. If the function is represented by one of these three categories, it could be a polynomial, a rational function, or a radical function. Each one of those has a specified domain. If it's a polynomial function, then that means that the domain is going to be the set of all real numbers. An example of a polynomial function would be something like f of x is equal to, let's say, x squared plus 4x minus 6. That would be a polynomial function, and its domain would be the set of all real numbers. If you recall, the domain is nothing but the set of all x values. So any x value that you assign to it, you'll always get an f of x value for it. So the domain for that polynomial function is the set of all real numbers. Now, a rational function, let's say, for example, we have this function f of x is equal to, let's say, 2x minus 6 divided by x minus 1. Now, to find the domain of a rational function like that, you'll have to set your denominator to not equal to 0 because you want to find out what values of x that will make your denominator 0 because of the fact that uh, division by 0 is undefined. So in this example here, 1 would be the number that will make your denominator 0. So we can say the domain for that will be the set of all real numbers with the exception of x equaling to 1. And then the third one is a radical function like this one. Let's say f of x is equal to the square root square root of x plus 6. When you have a radical function like that, you'll have to set the expression to be greater than or equal to 0 because the square root only deals with values that are bigger than or equal to 0 because we can't take the square root of a negative number and to obtain a real number. So in this case here, negative 6 or bigger than negative 6 would work. Anything less than negative 6 would not, because you'll get a negative underneath the radical. Okay. Now, let's look at some uh, examples of just that. Okay. Let's look at these, like this one. Find the domain of each function. And in part A, you got the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x minus 17. This is an example of a polynomial function. And here we want to find its domain. In this case here, any value of x that you assign to it, you're always going to get an f of x value for it. So in this case, in set builder notation, it will be the set of all x such that x is a real number. And then for interval notation, it'll be the entire number line from negative infinity to infinity. Okay? Because it's a set of all real numbers here. So an interval notation will just be from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, look at part B. We have a rational function called g of x, and that's equal to 5x divided by x squared minus 49. And here we want to find the domain of that particular rational function. And I did say that it is a rational function, so what we're going to have to do here is take what's in the denominator, which is x squared minus 49, and set it not equal to 0. Because we want to find out what values of x that will make your denominator 0. Well, in this case here, 
x squared minus 49 can be factored into differences of squares. Well, it is the differences of squares. That can be factored into two binomials, by the way. So x squared minus 49, I know this x squared is x, and 49 is 7. So we're going to have x plus 7. The other factor will be x minus 7. And then we set each binomial factor equal to 0. So we set x plus 7 to not equal 0, or x minus 7 to not equal to 0. And then we'll solve this equation, each one of those. For x plus 7 is not equal to 0 means that x is not going to be equal to negative 7. And then for x minus 7, not equaling to 0 means that x is not equal to 0. So negative 7 and positive 7 are the two values of x that will make your denominator 0. Because negative 7 squared will give you 49. 49 minus 49 is 0. And for the same reason, 7 squared is 49. Again, 49 minus 49 is 0. So in set builder notation, we have the set of all x values such that x is not equal to negative 7 or x is not equal to positive 7. Okay, now interval notation is going to be a little bit tricky because you have to start from negative infinity up to negative 7 and use parentheses. And then the union from negative 7 to 7. And then union 7 to infinity. Now, in this case here, you'll have to think of the number line and then exclude the values of negative 7 and 7 on the entire number line. So everything to the left of negative 7 would satisfy everything in between negative 7 and 7 and 7 would satisfy this rational function. And everything bigger than 7 will satisfy that rational function. Okay. All right, and part C, we got h of x is equal to the square root of 9x minus 27. h of x is equal to the square root of 9x minus 27. And in this case, we want to find its domain. Now, it's a radical function because we got the square root. So we're going to take what's underneath that radical, which is 9x minus 7, minus 27, and set that to be greater than or equal to 0. Because we want to find out what values greater than or equal to that particular number will satisfy this radical function. Okay, so here, for 9x minus 27 is greater than 0, if you add 27, you're going to get 9x is greater than or equal to 27. And then divide by 9. That means x is greater than or equal to 3. So any value of x greater than or equal to 3 will satisfy that function h of x. Anything less than 3 would not because you'll get a negative number underneath the radical. So here... This will be the set of all x such that x is greater than or equal to 3. And that will be in set builder notation. Now, interval notation is this. Now, the 3 is included, so we use a bracket. And anything bigger than 3, we have to use the infinity symbol. Okay? So an interval notation will be 3 infinity with a 3 having a bracket there showing that it is included in this domain. Okay, so that's basically how you will find the domain of any function, whether it's a polynomial function, a rational function, or a radical function. All right, next is the algebra functions. And that's adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing two functions. Okay, now you're first going to have two functions f and g, okay, because you have to have two functions to begin with. The sum of two functions f plus g of x will be f of x plus g of x. We'll just add the two functions together. 
The difference of the two functions is just simply f of x minus g of x. You'll be subtracting the two functions, f of x and g of x. The product, which is f times g of x, or f of x times g of x, you'll just simply multiply the two functions together. And then the quotient, f over g of x is the same as f of x divided by g of x. And that's under the provision that g of x is not equal to zero. Okay, so here, that's the sum, the product, well, the sum, difference, product, and quotient of two functions, f and g. And we're going to look at that in one of these problems that I have up here. All right, let's say I had this example. I'm letting f of x equal x minus 5 and g of x equal to x squared minus 1. So here I have two functions, f of x is equal to x squared minus 5, no, x minus 5, g of x is x squared minus 1. And here I want to find f plus g of x, f minus g of x, f times g of x, and f divided by g of x. Okay, so here we're going to do four things. Part A, we're finding f plus g of x, which is, in this case, simply f of x plus g of x. And f of x, of course, is x minus 5 plus g of x, which is x squared minus 1. And then from here, we go ahead and combine like terms. There's nothing for the x squared to combine, so we'll just bring that over. And the same thing for the x. That'll be plus x. Now, minus 5 and a minus 1 will be minus 6. So the sum of f and g of x would be x squared plus x minus 6. Okay. Now, part b is just the difference of the two functions, f minus g of x. And that's simply f of x minus g of x. f of x minus g of x. In this case here, f of x is x minus 5. Minus, now g of x, we're subtracting the entire g of x function from f of x. So here I'm using parentheses here around the x squared minus 1. And then the next step would be to remove the parentheses here. So this will be x minus 5. That minus sign will make the x squared minus x squared. And the minus sign will make the minus 1 plus 1. And then we can combine some like terms here. Let's see, that negative x squared, I'm going to bring that down. That x, I'll go ahead and bring that down. Minus 5 and plus 1 will be minus 4. So you'll have negative x squared plus x minus 4, which will represent the difference of f and g of x. Okay, now part c. is f times g of x, or f g of x, which is simply the product of f of x and g of x. And here f of x is just simply x minus 5 times g of x, that's x squared, minus 1. And in this case, we're going to have to use the FOIL method because we're multiplying two binomials. Okay, so in this case here, the first term is x times x squared, that's x, x cubed. And then x times minus 1 will be minus x. Then the inner, minus 5 times x squared will be minus 5x squared. And then minus 5 times minus 1 will be plus 5. Okay, so that's how we use the full method. Now the next step would be, well, we can't combine any like terms, so what I'll do here is 
rearrange these terms in descending powers. So the x cubed minus 5x squared minus x plus 5. And that will be the product of f and g of x. Okay, and then part D. We have f over g of x. And in this case, that's f of x divided by g of x. Now, f of x, of course, is x minus 5 divided by g of x is x squared minus 1. And I can leave that as is because I'm not going to be able to divide out any uh, terms in the numerator or in the denominator. Okay, now if I want to find the domain of these four functions where you have f plus g of x and f minus g of x and f times g of x, those are quite simple because their domains are polynomial, well, they're polynomial functions, so their domains are going to be negative infinity to infinity. Negative infinity to infinity. Okay. So for A, B, and C, F plus G of X, F minus G of X, and F times G of X gave me polynomial functions. So here, negative infinity to infinity will be the domain. But the domain for f divided by g of x is going to be a little bit different because you set the denominator to not equal to 0. So here you take x squared minus 1. It's not equal to 0. x squared minus 1 is the differences of squares. That's going to give me x plus 1 times x minus 1 equal to 0. Well, not equal to 0. And then we set each binomial factor equal to 0. So you have x plus 1 not equal to 0, and x, x minus 1 not equal to 0. So if x plus 1 is equal to 0, you'll have x is equal to negative 1. And for x minus 1 is equal to 0, you'll have x, is, let's say, not equal to, not equal to 1. So negative 1 and 1 would give me a denominator of 0. So the domain would be this in interval notation from negative infinity up to negative 1. And anything in between negative 1 and 1 will satisfy that function. And then from 1 to infinity will also satisfy that function. Notice I'm using the parentheses showing that negative 1 and 1 are not included. Okay. So that's how we find the domain of the algebra of functions. Okay, the next thing we'll look at is the composite functions. Now, the, compo the composite function says the composition of f with g is denoted by f with a small circle and then g. And it's going to be defined by the equation f circle g of x will be equal to f of g of x. Okay, so basically what's, what's going to be happening is this. G of x is inside the parentheses of the f of x. That means for each x in the f of x function, you're going to replace that x with whatever g of x is equal to. You have to be, in this case, you'll be given two functions, f of x and g of x. Okay, and the domain of the composite function f circle g is the set of all x such that x has to be in the domain of g, and g of x is in the domain of f. Okay. Okay, I'd like to give an example that's different from probably what's on those PowerPoint slides that I have. I'm going to change this up a bit. Here we're going to let f of x f of x equal, let's say, 5x plus 6 and I'm going to have g of x equal to, let's say, 
2x minus 1. Okay, And I want to evaluate this, the composition of f with g of x. Okay, and then later on we're going to be doing the composition of g with f of x. Okay, f circle g of x means this, f of g of x. That's basically what that means. Now, inside the parentheses of f, I have g of x. Well, g of x is 2x minus 1, so let's replace that g of x with 2x minus 1. So I'm going to be evaluating f of 2x minus 1. Okay. Now my f of x function is 5x plus 6. Here's my f of x function. I'm just rewriting that as 5x plus 6. Now this time, I'm going to be evaluating f of... And I'm going to use a different color here, 2x minus 1, which is what g of x is. Because as you're going to see here, for each x in this f of x function, I'm going to replace it with what g of x is equal to, which is in this case 2x minus 1. So I'm going to have 5 times, and in the parentheses, bring down this plus 6, because it's part of the f of x function. In place of that x, I'm going to put 2x minus 1 in its place. Okay, so I have 5 times the quantity 2x minus 1 plus 6. And then we're going to go ahead and simplify this. So 5 times, well, using a distributive property, 5 times 2x, that's 10x. And then 5 times minus 1 is minus 5 plus 6. And then... Combine like terms, negative 5 plus 6, that's going to be a plus 1, so I'm going to end up with 10x plus 1. So that represents the composition of f with g of x. And that's equal to 10x plus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to do the composition of g with f of x. And g circle f of x in this case is g of f of x. Okay, g of f of x. That's what the composition of g with f of x means. This time, f of x is inside the parentheses of g. And f of x is equal to 5x plus 6. So I'm going to replace that f of x with 5x plus 6. So I'm going to be evaluating g of 5x plus 6. Okay, my g of x function is 2x minus 1. Let me write this down. g of x is 2x minus 1. And I'm going to be evaluating g of, and in the parentheses, is my f of x function. That's 5x plus 6. So now, in this case, this x will be replaced will be replaced with whatever f of x is, and f of x is 5x plus 6, so this x will be replaced with 5x plus 6. So I'm putting 5x plus 6 in place of x, so I have two times the quantity 5x plus 6 minus 1. Now the next step would be to simplify this. 2 times 5x, that's going to give me 10x plus 2 times 6, that's 12, minus 1. And then 12 minus 1, that's 11, so I'll end up with 10x plus 11. Okay, so that's how we use the composition of f with g and the composition with g of g with f to do composite functions. Because you'll be given two functions, and then you're just going to Compose those two together by doing f circle g of x and g circle f of x. Okay.
All right, now the opposite of composing functions, which is the last thing I'm going to talk about, is decomposing functions. Here I'm letting f of x equals to the composition of f with g of x, which is the same as f of g of x. If h of x is equal to some algebraic expression raised to the power, then you're going to let g of x be that algebraic expression, and that would mean that x f of x will be x to some power. Because in this case here, you're replacing your x in your f of x function with g of x. So whatever's in, whatever algebraic expression that you have, that will be g of x. Which means f of x in this case will have to be x to some power. And then for this one, h of x is equal to the nth root of an algebraic expression. Whatever's underneath the radical is your algebraic expression. That means that f of x will have to be the nth root of x. And then next, if you have an out absolute value expression, h of x is equal to absolute value of some algebraic expression, then whatever is inside the absolute value bars will be your g of x, which will make f of x the absolute value of x. And then the last one, h of x is equal to 1 over some algebraic expression. Whatever your algebraic expression is, is in the denominator. That means that's going to be g of x, and that means f of x will have to be 1 over x. Okay, now let's look at a couple of examples that are just like that. Okay. Let's say we want to express as the composition of two functions. In this case, we got h of x is equal to 2x minus 5 raised to the third. Okay. I'm just rewriting what I have here. h of x is equal to 2x minus 5 raised to the third, and we want to express that as a composition of two functions, f of x and g of x. Okay, g of x is always going to be your algebraic expression. So we're going to let that 2x minus 5 be the algebraic expression, which is our g of x. That would mean that f of x would have, would have to have been x cubed. Okay, that's all there is to it. f of x in this case is x cubed. g of x is 2x minus 5. Okay. And another example would be this. Let's say h of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 5. And I'll write this over here. And we want to express that as the composition of two functions. Okay. Okay, that's what the direction says here. Okay, so here we want to find out what f of x was and g of x. g of x, again, is your algebraic expression. So here, that x squared minus x squared plus 5, that's the expression underneath the radical. That will have to be g of x, which will make f of x the square root of x. Okay. Okay, that's how we decompose functions by breaking it up into two functions, f of x and g of x. And keep in mind, g of x is always going to be the algebraic expression, if you notice on each one of those particular situations. Okay, so that will conclude this particular section on uh, the combination of functions and composite functions.